Welcome to lecture six entitled Membranes and Transport. As we continue our cell biology journey and specifically looking at the cell, we've now covered the organelles and the biological molecules within those organelles. We're now going to look more specifically at one of the most important parts of the cell known as the cell membrane. We've touched upon this before but we're also going to be looking at the transport that happens across that cell membrane. And before we get into the actual function of a cell membrane, we have to, have to, have to understand, and this is going to be our first flowchart, the structure of membranes in biology themselves. So we'll entitle this first flowchart, Structure of Membranes. So, we understand and we remember that a membrane is simply something that's going to separate the internal from the external. This is my internal cellular environment. It's in red and it's separated from my external gray environment by this layer right here. This membrane is going to be separating it. That's all a membrane is. It's something that separates internal from external and allows internal to operate independently of the external. It's a very, very important characteristic of life itself. So let's look at the structure a little bit more specifically. More so, we have to look at what are known as phospholipids. So phospholipids are the main component of membranes. We can consider them uh, the principal component, as your notes state. The principal component. That basically means that most membranes are consisting of phospholipids. They have a phospholipid structure. And I'll talk about what that specifically means when we get into our drawing in just a second. More so, phospholipids give us a structure that represents a bilayer. So the structure itself of these phospholipids are going to be arranged in what is known as a bilayer. And I'll put that in quotes because that's the term used. A bilayer formation happens. And this bilayer formation consists of three things. You have to have three things in order to create a phospholipid bilayer, which is then a type of membrane, which is the most important membrane you need to know. So three things that have to happen. Number one, you have to form a closed bilayer. Form a closed bilayer, and specifically a bilayer vesicle. All that means is that you create something that has the internal environment that's closed, closed from that external environment. That's all this means, forming a closed bilayer vesicle. This is technically a vesicle, but this specific type of vesicle, let's say, it's a cell. And that cell is going to have a cell membrane. That is one of the bilayer formation components. Next, we want to make sure we understand that the actual structure of a phospholipid bilayer, in terms of shape, is usually cylindrical in its shape but this is the most important part, is also amphipathic. And amphipathic, I just always think of ambidextrous. When you know that somebody's ambidextrous, they have the ability to do what? Use their right hand and left hand equally. They're comfortable with both. The bilayer, the phospholipid bilayer, a cell membrane is comfortable in both a polar and nonpolar degree. Simply speaking, this bilayer has components, which we'll label and sort of draw out in just a second, that are both polar and nonpolar. And remember, polar means that you're going to be hydrophilic, and nonpolar means that you're going to have hydrophobic se uh, sections or characteristics. And lastly, the phospholipid bilayer that we have been talking about is held together by hydrophobic interactions. And I'll draw that in just a second. Held together by hydrophobic interactions. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. Overall, I just want you to remember one sort of key point. All three of these, just the way that a phospholipid bilayer is formed, it all has to sort of occur in H2O because life, living cells are often found in a heavily sort of water environment, let's say. It's very rare to find living cells succeeding in a dry, um, you know, desert-like environment. Cells succeed when they are in an aqueous environment, let's say. So in H2O, or let's say even aqueous, that's a technical term for it, environment. That's when we see these characteristics really show up. 
because then we can see both the polar and nonpolar capabilities of the membrane, and we can then see the hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts of the membrane as well. Speaking of that, let's, let's draw it out. Let's figure out what it looks like. So right now I'll draw a very simple phospholipid bilayer for you. And remember, we're talking about a bilayer. Bi means two, two layers. And I'm going to draw two layers for you. So this is our phospholipid bilayer. Very simple drawing, but it's going to give you a very nice idea. So imagine that this is the cell membrane going around like this. Okay, and this, if I continue drawing a big circle here and another big circle here, I would have a whole phospholipid bilayer circling this whole thing, but I'm just going to focus on this area of the cell membrane. What's going to happen is I'm going to have these two regions. I'm going to have polar and nonpolar regions. I'm going to have what are known as hydro Hydrophilic heads, hydrophilic heads, so that's the head of my phospholipid, and the lipid part, remember what lipids were, lipids were nonpolar, lipids were hydrophobic, you're going to have hydrophobic tails on the inside, and tell me again, why do we have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic? Because cell membranes themselves, the phospholipid bilayer is an amphipathic structure. It's an absolutely amazing quality that it has to be both hydrophilic and hydrophobic at specific regions. And more importantly, we talk about these hydrophobic interactions. Look where the middle of it, right here. This area is going to be that part right here, held together by hydrophobic interactions. These hydrophobic interactions over here are what's literally holding the cell membrane together. So this is a basic introduction to what the structure of a cell membrane is. In our next video, we'll look at the fluid mosaic model, a very fancy term and a very important term that gives us an even greater and more in-depth look at what cell membranes are.